carving technique that generated out of Mich uh, state of Michigan. And one of the most prolific carvers out of the state of Michigan was a gentleman by the name of Ben Schmidt. Ben was uh, probably the best recognized carver in the state of Michigan. And one of the things that I love about decoy makers is they were really uh, frugal and they were very uh, utilitarian, meaning they were very uh, creative. And, and, and one of the things that Schmidt did is instead of painting these feathers on his decoys, he, he looked for a way to put those feathers on the decoys without spending a lot of time on it. So, and, and I'm speculating a little bit here, but it'd be like, okay, so how can we do that? Well, you could take them with a knife and carve them. That's a lot of work, okay? What Schmidt figured out was this. He figured out that he could make some stamps, some metal stamps. Take those stamps, lay them on the decoy, hit them with a hammer, and feather a bird in a very short time. Because he made, he just didn't make one or two decoys. He made rigs. He made lots of decoys. So, so again, he was looking for a way. How, how can I make those feathers quickly, consistently, and uh, be not only on the same decoy but between decoys? So he he stamped these scapular feathers on here. He also stamped. He also stamped these uh, these primary feathers on here. The, the the primaries and the secondaries he did with a scoop. He did with a gouge. So so he took the gouge and ran it. But the tips of those feathers, what he did is he stamped it. He stamped it. He stamped it, and then he'd finish it with a gouge. Okay. So the whole premise is is making feathers on a bird without a lot of work. Okay. So that's that's Ben Schmidt, a bluebill of his. Where I, picked, where I picked up on this is back in the early 80s, I met a guy by the name of Walt Snow. Walt Snow was a shop assistant for Ben Schmidt. I got to know Walt. I bought decoys right from him. I bought this mallard from him, and I, got, I bought a pair of mallards. Actually, I bought uh, uh, several mallards. But when I got the decoy, I was like, wow, that's pretty sweet. You know, look at all the feathering on that. And, and so, so I asked him, I said, how do you do that? He said, well, we have feather stamps. And so like all this, uh, these feathers on the chest, these little scallop feathers, I call them, you just take that hammer, bam, 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 just all over that chest. He had different size feathers. I'm guessing, let's see, one, two, three, four. There's probably four to five different stamps on this bird. And my guess is, is he could stamp that entire body in probably less than 15 minutes. Okay, so, so Walt stamped a lot of his birds. Now, if you study Schmidt decoys and Walt Snow decoys, uh, they mostly stamped the hands, okay? Uh, they did a little bit of stamping on the drakes, but mostly on the hands. And so for the car from a carving standpoint, I guess you have one of two options. You can either paint these feathers on, or you can, or you can, or you can stamp them, you can carve them, okay? They chose to stamp them because it's a lot easier to not only stamp these on here, but it's a lot easier to paint them. And I work with enough carvers to tell you, uh, new decoy carvers, the biggest fear and phobia is paint. It's like, now, okay, I, I carved my first mallard in, now how do I, how do I, how do I feather that thing? How do I paint it? Well, this stamping, I'm telling you, is, is pretty, pretty amazing, pretty simple. The biggest challenge with these is finding them. The guy that made these stamps, Walt Snow had uh, two sons, Doug and Ron Snow. This is uh, Doug uh, Snow, Doug's passed on, but this is uh, a bird that he stamped, and Doug actually made these stamps. He was evidently uh, had machinist skills, and uh, they are, and he actually made these stamps. So you can see how he could just hammer those right on the chest, all right? Here's a larger stamp. This is a goose stamp, okay? It's uh, about a quarter inch flat steel stock. This is a blue goose I just made, and I can just sit there with a hammer, and I'm going to show you here in a minute how I'll just lay those stamps in there. 
okay these scalp ones there and then on the back here 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 and then I changed to a different stamp but there's uh, let's see one two three four five different stamps on it okay and what it does is it really simplifies the paint because here's the deal Here's one, this is a blue goose that's not uh, sealed and ready to paint. Here's one that's finished. Real easy to paint. You don't have to paint all those feathers on there one at a time. Okay? So, really simplifies your paint. What I'm going to be stamping today are some bluebills of mine. We're going to be hunting decoys that I use. Here's some. Uh, 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 a group of hunting decoys I stamped last year. I hunted with these last year. Um, you can see Schmidt when he's he, he varied in his stamping. Okay, I've seen Schmidt birds that weren't stamped at all. I've seen Schmidt birds that are totally stamped. So he varied. But but uh, Ben did uh, stamp a fair amount of bluebills. The bluebill hen uh, out of the diver group. Were, uh, I've seen a lot that have been fully stamped. You can see. And then the drakes, just really on the back, and then these little scapular feathers on the side, okay? So these are from a group I did last year, and then I'm going to go ahead and stamp these for you today. Okay, so this is going to be a drake, bluebill. It's ultimately going to look about like that. And what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll uh, see if I can turn this a little bit for you here. Is that better? Yeah, that's great. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp these feathers back here. I'm going to stamp these scapulas here. And then even on these primaries, I'm going to show you how, right here and here, on how I take that stamp, and I'm going to lay that stamp in there. So, how long would it take you to paint a feather on the back of a bird, Dave? Two minutes. Two minutes, all right. Let's time me here. About one second. You get the point. So it's really just laying the hammer on there and, and, and hammering it. You don't want to get them too deep, but the key with this is knowing where to put them, right? And so if you know anything about nature, nature's not perfect. So you don't want these things. The one thing I'll caution you is if you do go down this road is try not to really get them perfect. You want to stagger them. You know, uh, when you get to the side pockets and even these pin feathers, you know, you want to do it about like a, a fish scales, you know, on how they're just not perfect. All right? So I'm going to lay another one in here. Here. And I'm just trying to... I think I'm gonna stop there. I like that. Stop there. This is actually my favorite stamp, this little scapular dude. I love it. What I'm looking at is I'm running these out right along this ridge here, and then once I get out where I can double them, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm doing one in the middle, one on the left, one on the right, one in the middle, and I'm staggering them. And then these will these will actually kind of taper off here.
It does break down the wood a little bit, so I'll get a little sanding. But that's basically what it looks like, okay? I'll turn to the other side. Maybe turn, give you an angle like this a little bit. Doesn't really take a lot of pressure. You don't want to really hammer this thing too hard. Just a little tap, a little love tap. Stagger them. Try to even these up a little bit. Really, the more irregular, the better. I can live with that. So now these speculums, I used to just paint those in there, but I've even kind of taken a stamp now. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll use the, like the left side of that blade there laid in on my pencil line and I just I just kind of dropped that that primary in there right I mean just Laid that speck them in there. Is it overkill? Could you paint it? Sure. What it does do for me is it gives me some good guidelines when I go in there and take the, 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 the gray or the white or whatever color I'm putting in there and, and it just gives me a nice outline to lay it in there. Take the right side of this blade now. And when I call them blades, they really are blades. They're actually pretty sharp. They got a nice bevel to them. All right. Eight minutes, maybe. Wow, what a great segment. Thanks, Pat. Folks, if you're enjoying these how-to pieces, head on over to the website www.thedecoyshed.org Look up in the upper right hand corner and click on the Sponsor Our Mission button. Keep watching for the St. Charles 2014 video that we'll be producing where we share highlights of what we saw at this year's show. We're looking forward to going back next year and invite all of you to attend as well. Once again, thanks for joining us in the Decoy Shed.